Welcome to Life Changes Church, where we love God, love people, and change the world. We're so excited you decided to join our new Sunday today. So go ahead, tell a friend, share the video, and let's get ready to worship. Verse 28 to 30. And this is a beautiful verse I love here. And it will happen afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also on the servants and on the handmaids. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood, fire, and pillar of smoke. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to you, God Almighty. Oh, God. I pray right now this morning, Lord God, that you will pour out your spirit, oh God, upon all flesh this morning, Lord God. Well, we will all prophesy your name. We will all see vision, Lord God. I pray for the vision from the young men and women who are here this morning, Lord God. I pray that your spirit will lead us to do great work, to walk in power and glory in your name, Father. Have your way in us, Lord, that we will walk in and signs and wonders shall follow us, Lord God. 
But we serve a God that, 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 that is of signs and wonder. We don't look for signs and wonder, but we look for the God who is of signs and wonder. And we praise you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. So I pray this morning, Lord God, that you will pour your spirit upon all flesh this morning, upon every young man, every young woman, every young boy, every young girl, every flesh here, Lord God, and that they will see your spirit in the last day that we are living in, Lord God. Where we shall walk with power. We shall walk in victory. We shall walk in glory. In your name, Jesus, we praise you now. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some God. He is a faithful God. Is everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because there is joy in his presence. There's peace in his presence. There's great fellowship. Amen. There's healing. There's deliverance. And as Deacon Rabbi said, there is an outpouring of his spirit. Then if we begin to ask God for it, he'll do it. Amen. So I want the outpour of his spirit, don't you? Hallelujah. So we're going to invite God, welcome him into this place. We welcome him to have his way. We welcome him to move in our midst. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Somebody say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in this place. We welcome you here. Welcome into this place. Everybody say, Welcome into this broken vessel. Welcome into this broken vessel. Say, You desire. Desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift, so we lift our hands. As we lift, as we lift. Come on, sing it again. Say welcome. Welcome you here. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our say as we lift our hearts. Say so we lift.
you all they you see. All they Is that see. your prayer today? You glorify Lord, your name. for our praise team and the band. They did a beautiful job this morning. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to welcome you to our Youth Sunday. Today is Youth Sunday. Can we give a shout of praise for that? Y'all looking very good today. Mom and the Jordan ones. That's your lead pastor right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your... Shoe game, yeah. shoe game. Yeah, we're shouting out today. Um, 
I just want to welcome you. I want to welcome the online viewers as well. Thank you for tuning in. You got to come down here and worship with us at 55 Spectrum Way. It's an amazing experience. You'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to get into our praise, um, our tithe and offering. We're going to honor the Lord in that way. We want to thank him for blessing us for the means to provide for our families and, you know, give back. Um, we're going to start with our financial decree. Um, I am a tither, I am a sower, and I am a lender. And I receive the open windows blessing God has promised me from the court into my obedience to his word and according to the word of God. Amen. Can we please bow our heads? Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for bringing us, Father God, together to your house, Father God, despite the weather outside, despite the pandemic going on in our world, despite all the other things that could have stopped us from being here, Father God, you brought us here safely. You brought us here for a purpose, Father God. You brought us here to heal us, to deliver us, Father God, to lift us up. And we pray, Father God, during this service this morning that we would be filled, that we would be delivered, that we would worship you in a way, Father God, that you would see it well, that you would be pleased with our worship, that you would bless us as we go out into the week, as we go back into our jobs, as we go back into the world, that we would be filled, we'd be able to touch people, we inspire them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Good morning, LCC. Good morning, LCC. How many of us have decided in our hearts that no matter what happens, we're going to press? We're going to keep pressing. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to keep pressing. No matter what comes, what, what obstacles thrown at me, we're going to keep pressing. So press, come on. Do this. Come on, play with me, press 
and pressing, pressing on, pressing on. Oh yes, we're pressing on. Come on, sing one more time with me. They're pressing on, pressing on. Forward. We know that you haven't given us too much that we cannot bear. So we say thank you because we know it makes us stronger. Everything that is coming our way is just meant to make us stronger. The process is not there to harm you, but to make you stronger. So we say, God, you are worthy. We say you are holy. We thank you, God, you are righteous. Thank you for bringing us through this week. Some of us don't even know how we got here, but we're here. Thank you, God. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy. If you know what we're going to sing it one more time together. Let's say, worthy is the worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Who was slain. Sing holy, 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 holy is he. And because we know that we're going to sing a new song. Sing a new song. To him who sits on. To him who sits on. Heaven's mercy seat.
for bringing you through. Only you know what he's done for you. Hallelujah. We say thank you, Lord. supposed to do it for Women Empowerment Month, but um, things happen. So this poem uh, disclaimer is about abuse, um, physical and sexual, and um, it is my testimony. Um, it happened two years ago, and um, I just come to the conclusion that I feel like I should be ready to tell it and allow someone else to hear it just in case it could help anyone else in here. So it's called Your Stain Suffices Me. Stuck in a box with nowhere to run, a place to hide there was none. The palms of your fearful hands is where I lived and in my thoughts is where you settled. Disconnected, drained. Every day was the same battle, same outcome, same tears, different type of sick feeling I had that never cleared. You took advantage, selfishly took parts of me, ripped the comfort of my own skin away. Yet comfort, comfort is what you gained. A voice you obtained, control you aimed, and blood stained was my new picture frame. I still wonder why you did what you did. Was it self-pleasure, contentment, begging you to unchain your hands, questioning the one with all the answers? Lord, why me? Unheard and unattended is what the silence felt like. Not words, whispers, screams, or a cry could end it all. Your stain sufficed you. The much you crave in me, every day I live with that. And you nothing. You're shook, I finally escaped your lies. Abuse you wish wouldn't die. I can't deny the peace you thought I'd never receive causes you pain, and that's good enough for me. You can't, your stains can't suffice you now. In Jesus' name, I am free, escaped with a euphoric heart. I might still have your mugs, but the heavens have captured me. You can't have a testimony without a test. You can't grow flowers without rain. The recovery, the recovery season is never meant to be easy. The woman of God feared the Lord, not man. Psalms 46, 5 says, God is within her, she will not fail. A soldier, a warrior, a survivor, a conqueror, clothed in strength and dignity. That is who the Lord, my God, says I am. Come on. Wasn't that testimony awesome? As children of God, we are called to rise up. talking about revival, so I just want to encourage you guys to rise up in this moment. Rise up. God is calling you. In the dark and all alone Growing comfortable. Are you too scared to move and walk out of this truth? Buried underneath the lies that.
the church, the praise team, and all those who are watching online, you are blessed too. Hallelujah. But you got to make it down here to the house. There's nothing better than wo worshiping God together as a family of believers. So we invite you guys to make it out. Hallelujah to Life Changes Church where we love God, love people, and change the world. Without further delay, we have an excellent man of God that's in the house of the Lord today. We have personally seen this young man develop and grow. We've heard him speak, you know, uh, several or uh, a few times. I wouldn't say several times because that would be exaggerating. We heard him speak from a distance a few times. And we were amazed by his intellect and how he delivered the word. And we were pleased with how the Holy Spirit moved in him. And we've been wanting to have him here to minister to our young people for a very long time, very long time. And we're happy to introduce to you the man of the Lord, the man of the Lord, the man of God that is here today. His name is Elder Makira Tulak. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe he's a member of Beulah Heights uh, Pentecostal. Yeah, uh, in New Haven, but it's an old church where you used to attend is Rayma Ministries. Let's please stand to our feet. And give the man of God a hand as he comes to deliver the word today. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Elder Bekir Tulak. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Life changes church. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Praise the Lord. Life changes church. Come on, can we put our hands together? Can we put our, lift our voices in honor of the God that has changed our lives? The God that has empowered us to rise up. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. The resurrected King. He's resurrecting me. He's resurrecting me. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? I know what it's like to be down, but he came down to where I was and he resurrected me. He met me in the place of defeat. He met me in the place of despair. And he said, arise, arise. He saw the mess that we had on us, the mess and the dirt that people said could never come off of us. And he said, my son and my daughter, arise, arise. I'm so grateful to be in the house of God this morning. And I want to give honor where it is due before we go any further. Thank you.
Bishop Howard, Pastor Howard, for the wonderful invitation to be with you all today. To the praise team for the wonderful worship that they led us in. Let's put our hands together for the praise team as well. And my God, I was I was blessed. I was blessed. Let's give it together. Let's give, put our hands together for the young people of this great house. Life Changers Church. I was so blessed by, by the testimony of our sister this morning. Let's put our hands together for her. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. And as you share your testimony, you don't know how many people, even those watching, are finding freedom because of the words that you shared this morning. So thank you for your yes to God. And to the young ladies who sang that song, I've never heard it before, but my God, it's resonating in my spirit. Rise up. Rise up. Let's put our hands together for them. I, I just love to be in God's house. I just love to be in God's house. I think having been away um, with, with uh, the pandemic for so long, it's always an enriching experience being able to gather together in his name. So before you're seated, um, if you turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 5, we're going to be in the fifth chapter of John, um, verses 1 through 15. I'll be coming a little old school tonight, uh, this morning, reading from the King James Version. I hope that's all right with y'all, but feel free to follow along in whatever translation it is that you may have. Um, and I have some friends and family in the house. I want to extend greetings to them and to those watching online. Grateful to have you with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Um, so John chapter 5, if you got to say, I got it. All right, we're, we're on the same page. All right, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15, and it reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Somebody say Bethesda. Having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at the pool at a certain time and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity and eight years, for 30 and eight years rather. When Jesus saw him lie and knew what had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming another steps down before me, Jesus said, Rise. If he was in this house right now, which he is, I believe he's saying, Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the sabbath the jews therefore said unto him that was cured it is the sabbath day it is not lawful for you to carry your bed he answered them he that hath made me whole the same said unto me take up thy bed and walk then asked they him what man is that which saith unto you take up your bed and walk and he said that the one that has healed, he, he did not know who he was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you're made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus. Somebody say it was Jesus. It was Jesus that had made him Paul, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you in no other name but the name of Jesus. 
Father, grateful to be gathered here together in your name, grateful that you are the one that revives us, that empowers us and calls us to arise. So we pray that you would open our ears, that you would hear what you're saying, that we would hear what you're saying in this moment. Open our hearts, that we would be able to receive and run with it. Open our understanding, our minds, that we would be able to process and know what it is that you desire for us to know in this moment. And I pray that you would open my mouth that I would speak your word with clarity, with your anointing, with your power. We pray that you would move in this place, that you would set someone free, that you would allow somebody to know that regardless of how long they've been in the condition that they've been in, they too can arise, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'll be honest with you. I was, I was really talk, praying with the Lord for a while, up until early this morning, saying, God, what is it you want me to say? And as I stepped into the house this morning, from the testimonies to the songs, I knew that the word he gave me, I believe it's a word for somebody today. Amen. I find myself, as the older that I get, the older that I grow, I find myself reflecting more and more on these words. Words that if you... I grew up in Canada, which I imagine most of you did, and you've graduated grade 12, or perhaps you're in grade 12, you're familiar with these words as well. It's the words of Shakespeare as recounted through Hamlet. To be or not to be, that's the question. Anybody know that? Yeah. To be or not to be. And Hamlet, he wrote this from a place of pondering the question of life and death. He was dealt some unfavorable cards in life. He had some experiences that caused him to question whether or not it was better to live or to die. Uh, difficulty with his family members, the untimely death of a loved one, a complicated relationship, and his mind caused him to wander. It caused him to wonder whether or not there was anything worth living for. And staring into the face of the unknown with with great uncertainty, Hamlet, he said that question. He asked that question to himself. To be or not to be. That is the question. And he made the decision and the resolve in his heart to continue. And my goal this morning is not to unpack the story of the life of Hamlet, but I want to use that question as we reflect on this passage and this text and speak to you this morning from that thought. If you can help me say it, just look over at your neighbor. If you're watching online, type it in the chat. To be or not to be. Uh, come on, look over, at your other, look over at your other neighbor and just say to be or not to be. And that is the question. It's fascinating to me. It's fascinating how when we hear things, how we hear usually determines what we hear. So in other words, we, we can hear the same thing, but depending on how we hear it, we can walk away with two totally different things. F follow with me. What are you doing? It's one question, but depending on how we hear this question, depending on how it's heard, it can be understood and interpreted in a different way, drastically different ways. What are you doing? It can mean... What are you up to or what are you doing? It can mean, why are you doing that? Same question, but how we hear it determines what we walk away with as the question is asked. And every now and again, we need to be reminded of what the question is so as to ensure that we are both hearing right and answering correctly. Our text, it begins with Jesus and he is on his way to a feast for the Jews. The Bible says that he has left Galilee and he is now back in Jerusalem. And he is there preparing for a feast. Most likely Passover, but the text does not say explicitly what this feast is. And the Bible says that Jesus, he's at a pool. A pool called Bethesda. Somebody say Bethesda. Bethesda. And in the Aramaic, Bethesda is translated to mean house of mercy or, or the place of the outpouring so there are five porches surrounding the pool and at this pool 
There are people gathered with infirmities. There are those that are blind, those that are lame, those that are paralyzed. And they would show up in expectation of a miracle. They would show up in expectation and anticipation of a healing. And this was not a swimming pool. This was not a baptismal pool. This was a pool that they believed to have healing power. It was understood that if you're, if you're reading, the, if you read it in the King James verse 4, it says that they believed that an angel would enter into the pool and at a certain time, at a certain season, trouble the water. And whoever was there first and the first to enter into the water would be healed. So you got a bunch of people waiting by the pool, believing for their healing to come. But their understanding is that the first to get in will be the first to get it. So. The Bible describes that there is a man with this ailment. He's paralyzed for 38 years. We don't know whether or not he is born with this condition or whether or not this is something that he has inherited over time, but we know that 38 years is a long time. That's almost four decades. Safe to say all the youth and all the young adults, that's longer than all of us. I'll I'll, I'll put myself in there. All of us have been alive. (laughs) 38 years. And As he is with this condition, he shows up to the pool of Bethesda. He goes to this place expecting for his condition to change. But he's been waiting by the house of mercy, waiting by the place of outpouring. But somehow his miracle has not been poured out yet. And I I can imagine that to carry a condition for so long, In many ways, this condition has almost become a part of him. So when people speak of him, they don't speak of his name, but they call him by his issue. They don't call him by his name, but they call him by his condition. He's the crippled man. He's the lame man. He's the one with the deficiency, the guy who always shows up to the house of mercy, but is never able to be healed. And to many, he's probably rendered a second-class citizen because of his condition. And maybe for some of you, your paralysis, it may look different than his. But though the paralysis may look different, though the labels might look different, you know what it is to have others talk about you without speaking to you. Assuming or attempting to draw conclusions of your end, of your story, based on how it began. And at times they do this, they attempt to draw these conclusions without even knowing your name. Have you been there before? Just wave your hand if that's you. Where where people either, they, 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 they take either your condition or the position that you're in and they use that to assume and draw conclusions about you. That because you're from that family, because you're from that neighborhood, Because you went to that school, because you have that reputation based on what you did with that person or those people, because you have this issue, they attempt to label you and define you and say that this is who you are and this is who you'll always be. Do I have a witness in here? It is at this place where people attempt to label this man by his crippling condition that Jesus meets him. He meets him at the place where his issue is most evident to those around him, and he sees the man, the Bible says. He knows that he has been there for a long time, and Jesus asks him a pivotal and a critical question. Will you be made whole? And remember what I said, how we hear will determine what we hear. And what we hear will determine how we respond and handle the moments that we find ourselves in. So before we lean into and unpack that, Jesus offers what I'd like to call, if you, if you follow me, say this with me, he, he, he introduces us to the, the art, the A-R-T, to being whole. Somebody just say that, the art to being whole. It'll all make sense in a minute. 
the, the, the art to being whole, but the first step of the art to being whole is to acknowledge. Somebody shout that out. Acknowledge. 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 At, at first glance, Jesus, he asks a question that he would obviously know the answer to. He approaches the lame man and he asks him, will you be made whole? It's a yes or no question. But somehow, based on how the man hears the question, he answers in light of why he could not be healed. Sir, I have no one when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. For while I am coming, another steps down into it before me, and I miss my moment. Jesus asks a simple question, but the man offers a complex answer. Jesus asks a yes or no question, but the man instead provides an explanation. And I'll be honest, the first time I had my encounter with this text, I saw a man that was just making excuses as to why he could not be healed. But it dawned on me. We don't know his story. We don't know his story and what led him to the place that he is at. And I really have a love. I love watching sports. I love watching action movies. But I also enjoy watching documentaries. And I found myself on YouTube. I was scrolling and I came across this, this, this channel. And what, what's interesting about it is on this program, this, this gentleman, he takes people from various backgrounds, various circumstances, but often the people who we would consider to be the outcasts in our society, and he interviews them. He interviews them to chronicle and to highlight their story. And it struck me and it challenged me because as I was watching this, these are the people who would often in our world be ignored. The prostitutes, the drug dealers, the drug addicts, the gangsters, the formerly incarcerated, the homeless, the people who many in our society would walk by without even looking to get to know their name. And he interviews these people, and as he's speaking with them, he allows the world to hear their story. What led them to the place that they're at? What were some of the things that happened to them that caused them to believe that they could not hope beyond it, that they could not see beyond it? And it struck me because I found myself, as I was binge watching this, having to actually repent before the Lord because of how I've handled people in the past. Making assumptions and drawing conclusions without knowing their story. We see people. We see how they're positioned. We see where they're positioned. We see them in the midst of their condition. And we often make assumptions and draw conclusions based on what we see without knowing their stories. What did they do to end up like that? Why can't they just get up and get it together? These are the kind of questions that if we're not careful, they run through our minds and we don't know the whole story. We don't know who afflicted them. We don't know who spoke words over them that they did not know that they could make it out of. Who placed labels and definitions on them that were not in alignment with what God said about them. And if we're not careful, we can even ask some of these same questions in church. Why does she talk like that? Why does he walk like that? Why does that brother smell like that? Why does that sister always look defeated when she comes to church? But you handle people differently when you know their story. The man, he acknowledges. He acknowledges his reality before Jesus. This is what it is. This is why it is what it is. We don't know his story. We don't know if this is something that he was born with or something that he developed over time. We don't know if he had been let down by people that he thought he could count on that he expected to help him in getting his healing. We don't even know how he got to Bethesda, but he's there. He's there, and we don't know how this rejection, how being perpetually defeated affected him, but he is at the place 
where he is expecting to have an encounter, where he is expecting to receive a miracle. And he speaks from an honest place. He acknowledges to Jesus, this is what it is. This is my reality. This is the truth of the matter. Not because he didn't want help, but because it is what it is. My only caution to the brother, as I empathize with his story, is that we need to acknowledge it, acknowledge the reality of where we are, but be careful not to be defined by it. Because it's a fine line be 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 between acknowledging our reality and being defined by our reality. Because sometimes if we're not careful, we can begin to take comfort in what is uncomfortable to us. Comfort in what is destructive to us. Comfort in what God does not say about us because it's easier to give a reason as to why we're still here than to believe that it's possible to move from this place. So instead of seeing Jesus' question as an invitation to be made whole, we can see it as a means for us to explain all the reasons why we can't. And I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but yes, it's true. Yes, it may have happened to you. Yes, it may run in your bloodline. Yes, that may be the label that they said. Yes, that may be the place that you came from. Yes, that may be how your story began. But Jesus, as he shows up, he can change the chapter. Jesus, as he shows up, he can change the page. Jesus, as he shows up, he can change the way that it ends. So it may start this way, but that don't mean that it has to end this way. Because if God be God, when he comes and when he shows up, he has the power to change the situation, to call us to arise and to move from the place that we find ourselves in. And every now and again, it will be difficult to believe beyond where we are. To have the faith to trust and to believe that God can do more than what we've seen based on where we find ourselves, based on the condition that we have. But we need to learn to pray the prayer like the man in Mark 9 every now and again. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. It's not a sin to wrestle with doubt, but don't stay there. Don't live there. Don't abide there, but say, God, this is what it is. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what they said about me. This is what I believed about myself. But I believe that as you show up, that as you make the declaration, that as you extend the invitation, there is more to the story of my life. Yes. And for some of you, the questions, it may differ a bit from this man. Jesus may not be asking you to come up from a physical paralysis, but maybe he's saying, are you ready to receive the gift of salvation? Are you ready to surrender the pain of your past? Are you ready to exchange the labels that they gave you for what I say about you? Are you ready to be born again? And instead of saying yes to the question, it's a yes or no question. Sometimes we'll find reasons to give excuses as to why we cannot be made whole, as to why we cannot be made over, as to why we cannot surrender. Well, you know, Lord, I, I still smoke a little bit. Lord, I, I still struggle with lust. I'm, I'm still battling with having sex with my partner. But God is not asking for the excuse or the reason. He's saying, will you be made whole? He doesn't matter about how you smell. He doesn't matter about what you did last night. But he's here today. He's here extending the invitation. And I, as he extends it, I'm here to let you know that you can be made whole. Somebody say, today is my day. Today is my day. And wholeness, watch it. He asks the man, will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? Which would suppose that the man is not to make himself whole. He doesn't have to clean himself up before coming to Christ, but Jesus will make him into who he desires for him to be. We think that we have to be made. We think that we have to be clean. We think that we have to be perfect before surrendering. But all that he requires of us is our yes. 
all that he requires of us is our surrender. And as we surrender, as we say yes, he will clean us. He will make us over. He will make us whole. He will make us new. Jesus is the living water. And how many of you clean yourself before you go into the shower? That don't make sense. But you go into the shower to get washed, to get cleansed, to get clean. And just like how we come in with our dirt to be clean, we come to Jesus with our mess to be made over, to be made whole, to be renewed. He has to acknowledge. And here is the second key to the art of being made whole. Respond. Respond. Jesus says to the man, rise, take up your mat and walk. And the Bible says that immediately the man is made whole. He takes up his bed and he walks. He must acknowledge the reality, though not being defined by it, but he also must respond in faith and obedience to the word of God. Because God has come to make us whole, but we won't see the evidence of the wholeness until we respond in obedience. He won't know that his limbs work unless he gets up takes up his mat and begins to walk you can hear the word you might even know the word in your mind but you won't experience it until you surrender until you respond and until you obey because the truth of the matter is we won't always feel the faith to take the step we won't always feel the confidence to believe that there's more sometimes God might be calling us to do something that is foreign to us it's unknown to us it's new to us but we need to have the confidence that even if we've never gone this way, even if by chance his limbs have never worked, saying, Lord, at your word, I will obey. At your word, I will come to the altar. At your word, I will surrender. At your word, I will say yes. Because there's still more. There's still more to your life. There's still more to your story. There's still more that God has. And as we surrender our stories to God, our lives to God, our past to God, our paralysis to God. He's able to redeem us, to restore us, and to recycle even the things that we think are wasted. The aspects of our lives that we think are meaningless, that we wonder what good can come from this. He's able to recycle it and use it as a testimony to change the lives of those around us. One of my favorite passages in scriptures in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 it talks about David David and he he and his men they arrive in a place called Ziklag they discover the Amalekites and they the, the the Amalekites they have invaded the south and destroyed Ziklag and the Bible says at the beginning of this verse that David is greatly distressed he is discouraged but the verse ends by saying but David encouraged himself in the Lord he acknowledges what he feels. He acknowledges the discouragement. He acknowledges the despair. He acknowledges the reality of his feelings and his position. But he makes the declaration to encourage himself in the Lord. So when I don't have the strength in myself to believe that it's possible, I can encourage myself in the Lord based on what the Lord says about me. When I do not have a blueprint to believe that I can see beyond where I am, if the Lord said it's possible, there's a but to my condition, and I will encourage myself in the Lord. We don't have control over everything. We don't have control over where we started, over who, which family we were born into, over how certain things transpired in our lives, over the conditions that we have. But we do have a responsibility to respond in faith to the offer of Jesus. Jesus doesn't just ask us questions to ask questions, but it's an invitation to be made over, an invitation to be transformed, an invitation to be revived. There can be no revival without obedience. There can be no revival without a response. There can be no revival without a yes, but as we say yes, he will make us whole. Because when Jesus shows up, he changes everything. Somebody say, he changes everything. He changes everything. Because the man, he's looking, for the, he's looking for the miracle to show up by entering into the pool, by entering into the water. 
But what he fails to realize is that he's standing in the presence of the living water. So he thinks, I have to get into a pool to be made over. But Jesus says, I'm here to make you over. I am here to pour myself out so that you can be made whole. And sometimes we're so fixed on the solution having to look one way. The solution having to be one thing that we don't realize that the answer is right before our eyes in Christ as he desires to make us whole. How will you respond when Jesus shows up? How will you respond when Jesus extends the invitation based on where you are, based on what you've seen, based on what you've known to be made whole? Will you give him every reason as to why you cannot be? Or will you give him that three-letter answer? Yes. Because I believe that Jesus is looking for a generation of young people who will say, yes, Lord. I may not have the blueprint, but I'll still say yes. I may feel discouraged, but I'll still say yes. It's going to cost me everything. But Lord, I will still say yes, Lord. I will say yes. And I wonder if that's anybody's testimony this morning. If you could just rise to your feet and lift up your hands and testify, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I may be young, but I'll say yes, Lord. I may have been in this place for a long time, but I'll say yes, Lord. I may not know how I'll see my way out, but I will say yes, Lord. As the songwriter said, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes yes Lord yes come on is that anybody's declaration this morning I'll say yes I'll say yes Lord to your will and to your way I'll say yes. I will trust you and obey. Trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be. And my answer will be yes. Lord. Acknowledge the reality, but choose not to be defined by it. Respond in faith. And here's the last key. Turn. In verse 14, if you have your Bibles, it says that Jesus, he sees the man in the temple. And he says, you've been made whole. Now go your way and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. And that's not to say that his condition is as a result of sin, but it is to remind us that a healing and a touch from God doesn't always mean that we will surrender to him. Because just because he does for us what we expect him to do does not mean that we will be connected. But his desire is not just to heal. He, he does desire to heal. He does desire to deliver. But his desire is for us to know him for us to be in relationship with him. So healing is a good thing, but it's not the end. Deliverance is a good thing, but it's not the end. Breakthrough is a good thing, but it's not the end. Jesus is the end. Jesus is the end. And I want to extend an invitation. If there's anybody this morning, perhaps... You can resonate with the story of this paralytic man. Maybe not with the same condition or the same issue. But you know your condition. Jesus knows your condition. He knows the labels that were placed upon you. And just saying, today is the day I'm going to say yes. Yes. Maybe it's your first time making this declaration. Maybe it's a recommitment. 
But if that's you, I want you to come to this altar. Don't worry about what's going on beside you. Don't even worry about what your friends are doing. If that's you and you're saying, yes, Lord, I want to be one of the ones that you use to change a generation, to change my city, to change the world for your glory. I say yes. I'm exchanging my brokenness for wholeness. I'm exchanging my pieces for peace. And Lord, I say yes. Come on, if that's you, come to this altar. Come to this altar. Today is the day. You don't have to leave the way that you came. But you can find restoration today. You can find hope today. You can find peace today. Come on, let's lift our hands as we sing. Does anybody else make your way? Make your way. I will trust you and obey. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be. And my answer will Come on, if there's anybody else, make your way, make your way. Today Lord, is the day. Yes. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I say yes, Lord, He can make you whole. Yes, to he can give you joy. Will and to your way. He can give you peace. I say yes, Lord, It's an exchange yes, to be or not to be. I will trust you no more excuses, no more running away. But Lord, I will be what you've called me to be. I will say yes. With my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. One more time, I'll say yes. I say yes, Lord. Come on, let's just lift our hands and cry out to him. To your will and to your way. trust you. I will trust you. Today is the day when your spirit when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I agree. With my whole heart I agree. And my answer
together. Even to those of you watching online this morning, I believe that he can revive you right where you are. Come on, is anybody rejoicing in advance for the revival? For the revival. You may not have seen the answer yet, but I'm, 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 I'm going to encourage you that he's already doing it, that he's already fixing it, that he's already working it out. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. to him of what was once the marker and the symbol, the sign of his brokenness, the sign of his impairment. Now it's become evidence of his healing. It's become a marker of his testimony. And God will invite us to take things up so that we don't run the risk of going back to the same place and making a bed in the place that he said to arise from. But I want to encourage a young person today. Don't be ashamed yeah. of your testimony. Yeah. Yeah. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb yeah, and the, the word, word of our testimony. Of our testimony. Yeah. The devil would shame us into thinking that we have to be silent because the tests that we've been through weren't pretty. Let me ask you a question. Which test is pretty? We're ashamed because our stories don't fit the narrative of what people think it should. But God is going to use the very things that you went through, the very things that you experienced, the very things that people sought to silence you and ostracize you for. He's going to use it yes. as a testimony to proclaim his goodness to the yes. nations. Yes, yes, yes. The man, as he came to the knowledge of who Jesus was, he became a witness. And not only did he turn from sin, but he testified of the goodness of the Lord. And if I could leave you with anything, as we have made the decision to be made whole in Christ, don't be ashamed of your testimony. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of your testimony, for it is the evidence of your healing. Yes. It is the evidence of the fact that God has done a work in you. Yes. Sometimes we make the mistake of seeing 
wounds as synonymous with scars. As we surrender to Jesus and ask him to make us whole, he takes the wound and he heals us. But sometimes he leaves us with the scars. He'll clean us up. He'll heal the wound. He'll change our hearts, transform our souls, but he'll leave the scar. Because the scar is an evidence that that what was once meant to kill you, you survived it. You survived it. And not only did you survive it, but those who are wounded in that place, when they see the scar, they too can know that if God could bring you out, if God could deliver you from it, if God could redeem you through it, he is able to do it in their life also. So I wonder if we could just say thank you to the Lord one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you healed us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that even as you healed our souls, God, you left some scars so that we could use them that we could use the mat, that we could use the very thing that once was an indication of our paralysis, that once was an indication of our woundedness to testify that you indeed have made us whole. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would empower us to revive in you, to experience a renewal in you. God, to exchange our brokenness for wholeness to exchange, Lord God, the condition, the paralysis for your wholeness. Make us over. We trust and we believe that even if we don't know how to do it, God, even if it doesn't come in the way that we expect, we trust and we believe that at your word, God, you can change our situation. At your word, you can change our lives. And we thank you that you have not only come to heal us. You have not only come to deliver us. You have not only come to allow us to experience breakthrough, but you have come, God, to invite us into relationship with you. That we might experience the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation. God, we will say yes. We will say yes. Though it will be difficult to withdraw from what we once found comfort in, God, we will say yes. Though people would seek to still call us by the names that you said that we are not, God, we will still say yes. We pray that you would make us into who you desire for us to be. Make us the evangelists that you desire for us to be. Make us the witnesses that you desire for us to be. Make us the disciples that you desire for us to be. Thank you that we do not have to make ourselves, but as we surrender to you, you will make us over. God, we will rise up. We will take up our beds. And we will walk in Jesus' name. We will walk so that those who saw us broken, that those who saw us down would know that you are able to heal them also. We will walk, Lord God, so that the enemy will know that though he sought to destroy us, though he sought to kill us with the very things that affected us, that afflicted us, we have found life in Jesus. We thank you, God, that what substances could not do, that what friends could not do, that what relationships could not do, that what the things that we sought to find hope, that we thought sought to find joy in could not do, God, you have done it. And God, we surrender once more and say that we will walk in accordance with your will. God, we will acknowledge the reality of where we are, though not being defined by it. We will respond to you in faith and obedience. And we will turn from sin, turning to you, walking with you, becoming like you, so that you might use us for your glory. Have your way today, we pray. And we thank you for reviving us once more. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together if you believe that this morning. so amen, amen, amen. wow what an amazing sermon can we give him a round of applause, round of applause. did you enjoy you Sunday today I can't hear you did you enjoy you Sunday today amen
Amen, amen, amen. Um, thank you all for coming out and joining the service. I have a few announcements um, before we go. Um, each week Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. we have Bible study. Amen, Bible study. All those who attend Bible study can attest to being blessed, to learning more about the word, and to really the fellowship and being with others. So please come out to Bible study online. Um, we also have our leader's prayer call Saturday, April 2nd from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and the final announcement is Children's Church. Children's Church will be launching very, very soon. Amen. Amen to that. So bring your children. Um, starting April 3rd, Children's Church will be in. So next Sunday. Amen. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Bishop now. <laughs> uh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Can we just stand to our feet? And give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to pronounce the benediction. Hallelujah. And get ready to exit the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We had our awesome Next Gen Sunday, You Sunday. Come on, can we just give everyone, hallelujah, a hand from the praise team to the young ladies who sang, to the young ladies who ministered and shared their testimony. What an awesome thing it is to have young people in the Lord. If you're watching online, I just... Uh, encourage you to continue to praise the Lord, keep your trust in Him, and abide in Him always. He will see you through. For those who are in the building and for those who are watching online, I want you to know right now that Life Changes Church has a financial need. A financial need. We have a, a, a bill that needs to be taken care of in the next few weeks in the amount of $3,000, and we are running short. I'm asking everyone, please, to find it in your heart, in your, in, your, in your own way, to sow a seed. Whatever that seed is, I'm not going to tell you how much it is. I'm not going to tell you what to sow. You sow what's in your heart. But we have a financial need, and I'm believing by God that it's going to be met. Amen? It is not Bishop's responsibility to pay this bill. It is not Pastor C's responsibility to pay the bill. It is our responsibility to pay the bills of Life Changes Church. It is not my church. It is our church. Can we say that? It is not Bishop's church. It is our church. And I have to say that repeatedly because I want you to understand even a church has responsibilities that need to be taken care of. So at this specific time, I just ask you to sow a seed and please uh, go see the the, the, the finance team in the back, we're not going to ask you to sow the seed to the front of the altar. You can see uh, um, Sister Leanne or the finance team uh, that will be here prepared to do it. We're going to take the offering in the back. It's okay. As you go out, just please remember to sow a seed of whatever God places on your heart. But we have to meet this need of $3,000. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his faith to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Now look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed, you are favored, and you are loved. Come on, say it like you mean it. You are blessed, you are favored, and you are loved. See you all next week. Blessings. Please exit. Wasn't that an amazing service? We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Feel free to contact us, visit our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you, you are, are favored, favored, you are blessed, and you are loved.